<laughs> Welcome to Orient Today, our Halloween special, if you yes. can't tell by the way yeah. we're dressed up. No, the, well, I don't know about you, but I dress like this quite often. <laughs> <laughs> so I am Joe Johnson. I'm joined by Tracy Woodrum uh, of uh, Tea with Tracy fame. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're live on the air, and uh, Halloween yes. is right around the corner. Are you excited? It is. I'm very excited. <laughs> yes. I'm, I love seeing other trick-or-treaters as they come to my door, and sometimes I don't recognize the neighbor kids because they have great costumes. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I've always loved Halloween my entire life, and, you know, it's tough when you become that teenager and you transition from trick-or-treating to giving out candy, and so I used to yeah. really embrace, like, decorating the porch and the lights and the music and giving out candy that was yeah. always a lot of fun yes well you know what i don't mind seeing the older kids come and trick-or-treat i know yeah. some people feel like oh it should be for the younger kids but why not let yeah. them have fun be creative dress up if they're coming to my house with a costume on you're getting candy so yeah there's a lot <laughs> All the teenagers worse are writing down my there. address right now <laughs> Now, do you have a couple so, of full-size candy bars set aside? I, I will go and get some. I did that last year as well, yes, where I had the full-size candy bars. So if I know you and see <laughs> you, yes, you'll get the. <laughs> I haven't been to a Halloween party in a long time. I used to go to Halloween parties all the time, and uh, they would have costume com contests, and I would win, like, every well, year. Yes, would, look uh, at you. Yeah, that's I got great. my <laughs> Ghostbusters gear. I uh, mean, yes. It's functional. Down to the details. You can catch all the ghosts. And stuff. <laughs> that's right. I'm a big movie prop collector, so I have a lot of replica movie props at home. So I have all the Ghostbusters stuff at home. So, That's And I love the movie. It's like one of my top ten favorite movies of all time. And I've been to the fire station in New York, which was Ghostbusters headquarters. Yeah. Uh, there's a hotel in L.A. where they catch Slimer in the movie. I visited <laughs> that. Um, and earlier this year, I was touring uh, Sony Pictures in L.A., and they have the Ecto-1 uh, ambulance oh. on display on the on the property of uh, Sony Pictures. So yeah. got to see that in person, too. So Very yeah, yeah. nice. Yes, awesome. that is so much fun. And, yeah, I, the movie was just on because I know I, I turned on the TV and, you know, my son was like, what is that? I'm like, that's Ghostbusters. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you got to introduce yes, them to Ghostbusters. Yes. That's a fun one. You know, if you have littler ones who want to watch a Halloween movie, that's a good one to pop in and watch. Yeah. Not too scary, even though it right. has its moments. But right. It came out when I was a kid. Well, you too. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, obviously, Lake Orion has really, really gotten into Halloween. There are so many events over the past week or so, and they're all a lot of fun. Um, the first one we're going to talk about is the Boo Bash. So, recently, uh, right here in the, in, uh, the Orient Center, uh, Orient Township Parks and Recreation has their Boo Bash, and luckily, they, uh, they lucked out with a beautiful Beautiful night, so they were able to set up a lot of stuff outdoors, uh, games and trick or treating stations and uh, face painting. And one of the cool moments was uh, they bring the uh, Leslie Science and Nature Center in. They were in the Orion room and they had live bats and a scorpion and a salamander or something. Wow. Um, and that's really neat to see those up close. And then of course, a little hay wagon ride over to the Polyan Trail where they had a little uh, pumpkin patch set up. And uh, it's just a lot of fun seeing the kids all dressed up and picking their pumpkins and playing games. And uh, it's a really popular event. I was told that the day they started accepting registrations for the event, they filled the capacity, they wow. sold out. Um, it's one of the few events that the Orient Township Parks and Rec actually charges a fee for. Um, most of the events that they do are free to the public thanks to the Parks and Rec millage that uh, will be on the ballot um, on Election Day. Um, but yeah, so uh, that millage allows them to have fun events all year long and uh, this Boo Bash is one that I look forward to every, every year. Uh, indoors there's uh, cider and, and snacks and games and photo opportunities inside the Orient wow. Center. And, does that not give you oh the creeps gosh, like seeing yeah, that I'm scorpion? Not sure. like scorpions and bats. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I don't uh, think I have the guts to hold a scorpion in my hand. Uh, yeah, I'm with yeah you. that gave me the heebie jeebies. Yeah. But uh, it was fun riding on the hay wagon, and uh, it's just a really, really good time. The Boo Bash is just a blast. I, Like I said, I look forward to it every year. So, um, yeah, so yeah. that was a fun event. Oh, it looks great. And then uh, something else, a big event that happened just recently, uh, last weekend, the previous weekend, 
Uh, the Motor City Comic Con returned to Michigan. Now, traditionally, the Comic Con was only held in the spring, and it was a okay. big, massive event. But due to COVID in 2020, uh, they couldn't hold their event in the spring. Uh, they ended up holding it in the fall. They did kind of a smaller scale version in the fall, and it was a huge success. Wow. So it returned in the spring, but now they decided, well, we'll do a spring one and a fall one to see how it goes. So this was their fall event up at the Suburban uh, Collection Showplace in Novi. And as you can see, just all kinds of costume characters. Just, yes. it was so much fun. There's celebrities there. There's Alice Cooper. Wow. Um, he had a long line uh, the whole time. I was there multiple days. Jamie Farr from MASH. Do you remember Klinger from yes. MASH? Uh, he's still as sharp as a tech and people were happy to see him there. A uh, lot of Star Wars cosplay and I, I personally really enjoy seeing the celebrities. I like going up and saying hi and getting autographs and stuff like that. So yes. that's a lot of fun. Um, but the work that a lot of these people put into their, their costumes is just amazing. Right. Really high-end stuff. A couple of cool vehicles were on display. There's some vehicles from Jurassic Park. And a friend of mine owns this Munsters coach. This is a replica of the car that was on the Munsters, and uh, he brings that out uh, for Dream Cruise and uh, brought it out to the Comic-Con. Uh, look at that. I wow. mean, think of the, the effort that goes into So there's a, per there's a person in there's there. There's a person wow, in there walking okay. the floor. Yes. There's Edward, Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. Uh, this one was really cool. This one was neat. So yeah, these people, they really, really get into it. There's a whole gaggle of Spider-Men. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that was that was a blast having that return to uh, Novi. Uh, oh, and of course, oh we my. got the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Oh that's God. right up my alley. <laughs> yes, so, there you go. <laughs> uh, so that's a fun event. That's, that's a lot of fun. And there's yeah. toys and comics and all sorts of stuff. So uh, really cool to see that come back. And they've already announced the date in the spring uh, where it's going to come back uh, next year. So okay. I'm looking forward to that. So if you missed it yeah. this fall, you can catch it in the spring. That's right, right. All right. So, and then this past weekend, man, there was a really cool event, not only in Lake Orion, but it was a joint event between Oxford and Lake Orion. And you're dressed appropriately for it. Yes. <laughs> um, for the first time ever, Lake Orion took part in Oxford's Witches' Night. Now, it's something that the Oxford DDA has been doing for a number of years, I think yes. since 2018. Um, but Oxford and Orion have been really making an effort to kind of partner up on events. And they have a trolley that shuttles people back and forth between the two communities. And yes. it seems to be working pretty it's well. It's a fun trolley. If you haven't, have you had, had an opportunity to ride the trolley? Yet? You'll see it yeah, in the yeah. video. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. I've, I've ridden the trolley. It's, it's a lot of it's fun. It's pretty to be able to cool. Go. Bit yep. of a throwback. And so in downtown Lake Orion, there are lots of women and a few guys who yeah. were dressed up as witches and warlocks. <laughs> and there were a couple of little kids you'll see that were getting in on it. And uh, man, they were just having a great time. And the thing I love most about it is Lake Orion and Oxford were both bustling. Mm -hmm. A lot of the shops stayed open late. Of course, the restaurants were open. And so you saw people eating dinner and shopping. And there's the trolley pulling up to pick up its passengers. Um, and uh, it's really great to see those downtown areas really bustling with activity. And, and there's, a, there's a shot inside. Yes. It was full <laughs> of witches. Uh, oh. They had that trolley packed to capacity. And uh, there's a flying monkey. And Ooh. So now we're in Oxford, and uh, the activity in Oxford was double what it was in Orion. And it was right. good in Orion, uh, but in Oxford, uh, it was just witches as far as the eye can see. And, uh, the Real Men uh, of Orion and Oxford campaign where they raise money for cancer. Yeah. Um, they had their big inflatable pink chair in Oxford, so okay. they were raising money that way. And uh, I think the, the priority though of this event is to encourage local shopping, local yes. dining, and yep. really support your downtown area. Yeah, so. I know it's an event that many women look forward to every year. Mm -hmm. Put it on the calendar, get the babysitters, and then get out. So yeah, yeah, what an fun. absolute blast. It was really, really neat. And, um, and also, this was a few days ago, or I, I should say a week ago, uh, the DDA 
brought back their Halloween extravaganza. Now, it's evolved over time. I don't, you may remember when it was a parade. Yes. Yeah. And it would start at the, uh, the Eamon, Eamon Center, Center mm -hmm. and work their way down Broadway Street. Well, of course, COVID screwed things up again. <laughs> and Lots so they, <laughs> they had to kind of adjust it a little bit where they had a smaller space in 2020. Now it's pretty much confined to Children's Park, mm -hmm. but it's still a blast and a lot of kids, a lot of families showed up. So yes. have you ever taken part in it? Have you ever yeah. gone Oh yeah, it? back in the days from the, the parades on down, all of my kids used to, they loved it, looked forward to it. It was yeah. an event we could not miss. Yeah, so, I missed yes. the parade. It was a yep. really cool visual to see hundreds, if not a thousand kids yeah. marching down the street. But the extravaganza is, is really cool. It is cool. nice. They and usually have donuts and cider yep. right there in the park and it, it is a lot of fun. Yeah. So let's Let's take a look at this new story to uh, look back on the extravaganza from last week, Wednesday. On Wednesday, October 19th, the Lake Orion community descended on Children's Park in the village for the DDA's annual Halloween extravaganza. This longtime Lake Orion tradition started out as a parade down Broadway, but was forced to adapt when the pandemic arrived in 2020. Now families visit approximately 25 trick-or-treat stations set up throughout the park where local businesses and organizations hand out candy and gifts. The DDA provided cider and donuts and a DJ spun some spooky tunes from the gazebo. Well, I mean, Halloween and family-friendly activities has been a tradition for Lake Orion. Um, this particular tradition um, has grown out of Lake Orion growing up and becoming more busy. Um, we used to be able to be quiet enough that we could um, send the kids down the middle of the street safely and uh, and now it's not as safe to do that so we decided to have them come and parade around in the park and we've got arrows all over the place just follow the arrows that'll help um, keep everybody moving um, smoothly. The community really came together to make this event possible with volunteers helping out, businesses donating candy, and of course, the sponsors. Yes, actually we've got some students here from um, the local school district. They're here volunteering their time. We have a teal pumpkin. Um, teal pumpkins are for, um, so the kids know uh, with allergies, they know that they can go there and get something that is safe for them. And then we did have some local businesses who donated the candy. I think it was Primetime and Amazing Petals. They both donated candy and we've got students handing out the candy for them. Um, we've got some new sponsors. We have Flip Spot, Gymnastics and Cheer, R&R, &R, Med Spa, um, and a, a classic, um, Megan Spencer, Berkshire Hathaway, Key Realty. Um, we have Haney Farm Bureau, m and Graphics and Meyer and Lowe's Beauty Spa. So we have a lot of sponsors this year for this and we're excited that everyone's here. Next up on the DDA's calendar is the Sing and Stroll tree lighting ceremony scheduled for Thursday, November 17th, beginning at 4 p.m. Sip some hot cocoa while enjoying performances by Broadway Dance Company and the High School Choir ride in a horse-drawn carriage and of course Santa and Mrs. Claus will make an appearance. For more information visit downtownlakeorion.org. From Children's Park this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. So how cool is it to see Children's Park just filled the capacity and kids having fun and they got that brand new playground yes. so the kids were also able to play on the playground and use the swings and everything so Fantastic. really really cool event in downtown Lake Orion. It's great to see it bustling. Uh, so joining us now we have Roger Broder from uh, the Lions Club who's so active in this community everywhere you go every event that I'm at. I see you in the Lions Club representing <laughs> out there. So um, you're busy throughout the year with Lions Club activities, aren't you? Absolutely. Well, first, Joe, I want to thank you for letting me know it was costume day so I could wear, I could come <laughs> as a lion. Go. There <laughs> you go. Yes. <laughs> you I, know, almost, I almost stole some of your decorations here in the studio so I could just hang them on my shirt. You do have that. Uh, I've seen that Lions costume ro roaming around at events. I we could have worn that. Probably couldn't talk through it. Right. Warm today. <laughs> <laughs> a little warm for that. 
So, so yeah, so throughout <laughs> the year, whether it's the Jubilee and uh, Flower Fair or whatever, we, we're seeing the Lions Club there. You do the, the Kids Eyesight uh, program, which is really cool. So, so many things, yeah. Talk about what, what, you know, some of the events and, and your activities that you do throughout the year. So we, we, we do a lot in the community. We do a lot for kids and other people throughout, really throughout the state, if you will, and nationally. Uh, but some of the things we do, obviously Lions were started or asked by uh, uh, Helen Keller back in the 1920s mm -hmm. to support the blind and, and hearing impaired people. So that's a big part of what we do, but locally we do a lot of other things. So when people need help with glasses, they can't afford them, we'll help people with that. Um, that's a big part of it. Mm. The, um, we, help, we contribute to the high school senior all night party and we have scholarships for two students per year they do an essay and we judge the essays and give them a scholarship uh, there's a, a camp up in Lapeer north of Lapeer called Bear Lake Camp for Blind Children Been there, yeah. it's pretty cool that was started right by here. one of our own Lake Orion Lions Al Casson and wow. uh, it was originally over here in Franklin Camp over on Long Lake yep and oh, yeah, yeah. so it's moved up north of Lapeer now and so that's so that so that blind kids and other kids with other needs can have a camp experience like all others yes. and they they shoot bow and arrow <laughs> they shoot bow and arrow they climb a rock wall that's that's awesome. they uh, they they have a zip line it's a kayaking canoes beautiful fishing beautiful area i mm -hmm. actually i had a scrapbooking business years ago and so in the off season they rented out to scrapbookers and so you can go and experience oh, yeah. the camp and you get to see it mm -hmm. and wow. so it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. yes. It's kind of yeah. neat, uh, even though that area that used to be the camp in downtown Lake Orion, even though that's been developed as a subdivision, they saved that Camp Franklin sign. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of neat when you drive through there and you see that sign that they preserve. That's yep. pretty cool. That's, that's Lake Orion yeah. Lions Club. Yeah. One yes. of our own members. That's awesome. That. And then so. there's the Lions, that you do some work with the Leader Dogs too? It, well, Leader Dog was started by Lions Clubs oh, actually. Wow. Again, back in, I believe it was in the 20s, it was started by a bunch of people that, a bunch of lions that got together mm. and wanted to have a place to train dogs for, yeah. for blind people. So, that's yeah, great. and it's still largely supported by lions. And, and that's headquartered in Rochester Hills, is right? it? Yep, yeah, Rochester Hills. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So how is all this possible? How, <laughs> how can you possibly do all that? <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work, I'll tell you. We have, we have our charity events and we have our fundraisers. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, we have coming up, of course, well, at Christmas time, one of our big charity events is our Christmas basket program. So the week before Christmas, we fill the Cirque building in the gym there. We fill the food place with food and gifts and we we distribute about 200 families yeah. we distribute oh there you go we distribute food and gifts to over over 200 households and seniors mm. and it's a big community event that mm -hmm. and we it's all volunteers yeah so families come in my kids have been doing it since my oldest was nine years old now he's 23 mm. and they've been he was nine, my daughter was six. They've been, they, and they, they want to take time off work or school every year to be there. It's a huge family event to get people there to shop. And, and then on Saturday morning, the 17th, we'll be uh, dis yeah. distributing the food, delivering it in yeah. people's cars. It, it's it is a great event. Wonderful. I've participated with my kids in the past Did as you? well, and it's, it is. It's What's so amazing about it, obviously I shoot video there every year and it's just so well run and well yeah. organized and uh, to see all the volunteers like busy bees just, but there's no chaos, there's no anarchy, it's all very We regimented. do that part beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> the anarchy and the chaos, yeah. that happens in our own meetings. <laughs> where, does, uh, where does all that food and donations come from? There's also, there, I see toys and games there. And you name it. Food, where, where does it all come from? Well, a, a good share of the food comes comes from the schools. So the schools do can drives and they have they get it all donated. We have I believe we have a box here in your studio for and at the township offices and the uh, library um, Wonder Cleaners on Lapeer Road. A lot of different places we have boxes for food and gift donations. Mm -hmm. So it comes from the community. Yeah. Uh, and then some of it we have we do purchase. We spend quite a bit of money at Meyer and Kroger. 
Yeah, the perishables, the meat, sure. and dairy, and all that. Stuff. Oh yeah, people yeah, get yeah. a ham and and eggs and cheese and milk and I mean even things like toilet paper and paper towel and cleaning supplies. We give them yeah. a lot of stuff to just help them out at that hard time. Yeah, yeah. On one hand, it, it's sad that there are families in Lake Orion that need this service. Like Oakland County is one of the wealthiest counties in the nation, yes. yet there are still hungry families that mm -hmm. uh, need this service. But on the other hand, it's so encouraging that groups like the Lions are taking care of them and, yeah. and uh, for making sure. sure that they have a happy Christmas. Well, it's sometimes, just as you say, in a community like ours, those people are forgotten because that can't possibly happen yeah. in this place. Right. So we try to help those people. Yeah. That's that's one yeah, of our goals. It's great how you so. bring the community together to help the community. Yeah. So. yeah. Now I kind of feel like I'm at Target because we have Halloween set up, <laughs> but Christmas is right over here. <laughs> and right. just in a week or so, we have a big event coming up. Uh, let's let's talk yep. about that. That's mm -hmm. this is this event that's coming up in a week or so is one of the main fundraisers for the Christmas bas basket sure program. Is. Sure is. Yeah. So November fifth. Uh, we haven't had our auction in the last two years oh. because of our favorite subject. <laughs> and uh, so this time we're back at the Malosh dealership and we're happy to have their help every year with this auction. So we have our big dinner and auction November 5th. And that's, one, that's a big part of how we pay for all these different things we do and especially the Christmas basket program. And so uh, come on out. Go to the, uh, yeah, some pictures of some of the old auctions, nice. So uh, go to our Facebook page, Lake Orion Lions Facebook page, and uh, you'll see a flyer there in our events, and buy some tickets. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great, fun night out, the dinner and the auction, and we have kind of a mediocre MC for the night. <laughs> once again, they're gonna give me a microphone. <laughs> They don't learn. Well, how great that, you know, Malash donates the space to you and you fill every square inch of it. And yeah. the, the baskets, uh, part of the auction and, and the raffles are the baskets. Where do the baskets come from? All the so donations and stuff. We, we have donate. Some of it we buy. Yeah. Some items we buy that we auction off. But a lot of it comes from the community just giving us donations and helping us out in that way, too. So you walk so, up and down. You, it's a silent auction for the baskets, Actually, right? we're changing it this year, Oh, it's year, not Joe. a silent yeah. auction. Oh, yeah, I'm we're, glad I we're shifting things around this year. Okay. okay. It's going to be all raffles. All raffles. We're going to have right. a few uh, live items, but we're going to have all raffles this okay. year. So a little different format. We've got a new caterer. Mm. You know, right. a lot of things are we're so just changing things around. equal opportunity. If you haven't won a basket in the past, this is your year to do <laughs> it. Go. Make sure you get there to you the go. event. A lot of items for a lot yes. of items up for raffle that are really nice. Yes. So how does that work? So if I were to attend, do I buy a raffle ticket and then decide which item I want to place sure. it in? Is that how that works? Well, the, the goal is you buy many, many. Many, many. Tickets. Yes, <laughs> yes, right. many. There's many options. Yeah. I, I've been to the event, and there are a lot of fantastic baskets. Really so you're going to want to buy quite sure. a few tickets tickets because you're going to want to spread them around. <laughs> yeah, you can put you could you could buy yeah. 20 tickets and put them all in in the bucket for one item or spread them around however you want to do it. Depends on how bad you want that one right, item. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and increase your odds. And so, so later on in the night someone will pick we, up the container and draw a name and announce a winner that's sort Exactly. Of thing. Exactly. And we also that's have exciting. other things. We have some some card card games. We have a, a board like a a square yeah. board of squares there's a bunch of different opportunities to to help us out and maybe win some money or a nice item i know in the past right. there the the most popular item in my opinion was a puppy i used i remember someone used to yeah. walk around with a puppy do you do that we anymore? did that for a while but <laughs> it's a, it's always that risk that somebody gets a puppy and maybe they've had you know, one or two too many and now they have a puppy they bring home and it's, they wake so, up the next day where did this come from yeah. <laughs> exactly so no we're not going to have a puppy this year uh. that one's out what a what a but, great event though like i said i've been there many many years in a row and everyone's it, it feels like it's the official kind of kickoff for the holiday season because really it's the first holiday themed event that i know i attend that i cover so yeah it's sort of the kickoff of the holiday season yeah so. we have a we have a lot of fun that night yeah yeah so 
But then one of the other things we have coming up that I know you've been to, and it's a it's a big hit, is we go to the Pine Tree School. Oh, yeah. And uh, we have a Christmas party for the kids there that um, it, it just, if that doesn't make you cry, watching these kids in wheelchairs and, yeah. you know, some of them can't talk. And, mm -hmm. and we have Santa there. We have an elf there. We have Mrs. Claus. And we just have a have a party for them and yeah. and they all get a little gift and that is really a, a touching moment in one yeah. of our events so yeah for those who don't know what used to be pine tree elementary school is now the pine tree center mm -hmm. and it's for mm -hmm. primarily special needs kids right yes right. Yeah. and yeah so to bring uh, santa and mrs claus to them and, and have a party it's 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 pretty special yeah what did you used to do that prior uh to going to Pine Tree was it well before it was pi before Pine Tree when it was still an elementary school we had a party at the Cirque oh that's right and so they would yeah. all come there yeah, it was yeah. the same event it was just a little more difficult for them that's right yeah. now we all yeah, go yeah. to the to the one location and that's it works fantastic. out really nice oh it's what, a, what a great event that's yeah. awesome yeah and so, so um recently fairly recently within the last few years the lions club revamped their website so it's looking nice so if people want to go to the website and either donate or see what's going on the website's a little weak right now Is actually, it? Oh. actually because they discontinued the software that it that we edit it okay edit with but so is Facebook the primary, the primary Facebook way? Facebook is our primary okay. communication. Or right. you can just email us at contact at lakeorionlions.org. Mm -hmm. Or we have phone number two. It's yeah, on yeah. The, it's on the Facebook page. Awesome. I don't have it memorized. <laughs> yeah. Facebook, but, I mean, social media, really, Joe, that's where a yeah. lot is a lot is happening right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we had very so, little, very yeah. few hits on the website. It was mostly on Facebook anyway. Okay. So. Yeah. It's easy we'll to find. You can search up. So you search for the Lions Club, like sure. Lions Club, okay. like Orion. I do see yeah, a phone number here: two four eight five six one three two zero three for yeah, you ticket can, information. For tickets for the auction, yeah, you Great. can call that number five six one three two zero three three two zero three. Yep. Or contact at lakeorionlions.org. Okay. Are we'll you still accepting you. any donations for the uh, for the raffle? For the event, not so much. I mean, we could. We could always use some, you know, if there's some somebody has a condo up north or down in Florida or something <laughs> they want to they want to auction off. Certainly, we yeah, could yeah. use right. that. Yeah. Some big items to to raffle off or or um, auction off. Yeah, but yeah. Um, but certainly, if you're looking for volunteer work, the Christmas baskets on December 16th and 17th yeah. at the Cirque. That's our best time. Families, individuals, we don't care. Um, the, yeah. the football team usually comes over and helps us because some of us are old guys with bad backs, you know. And, <laughs> and students still need to so. earn service learning hours, right? Yes. Yep. What yes. a perfect way we to... Are, we sign a lot of those forms yeah. that, that day. Yeah, That's they get a lot, of, a lot of time so. there. And, and also, if, if, if somebody's looking, you know, I, I know a lot of people are retired or don't have a whole lot to do while the kids are in school. We, we do we have a lot of events where we need members. Um, in the time yeah. I've been a lion, about 12 years, We've gone from about 50 members to over 100 now. Wow. We're about half men, half women. In fact, our president this year is a woman, Denise. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I'm a past president myself. So we have a, a big range of people from all walks of life. I don't know how many real estate agents we have. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if your name is Jim, you're really welcome. Yeah. I think we have six gyms now. <laughs> so what are, the, what are the requirements to be a Lions Club member? Um, just want to help people. Really, just give us a little bit of time, and we aren't strict like you must come to so many meetings or anything yeah. like that. It's yeah. you do what you can when you can. Yeah, family is first. You know, work and family first, and what you help out when you can. So we yeah. we aren't looking for a, a strict commitment. Just just help the help. the desire to help people. That's yeah. all. That's, That's great. So we Fantastic. really it's yeah. just a bunch of people getting together. We have dinner a couple times a month, have a meeting, and maybe a drink or two, and hang out try to figure out how to raise money and give yeah. it all away and help the and, community yeah. and by the way a hundred percent of what we take in goes back out that's great we don't have an admin budget the, the admin budget is some raffles we do internally with our own money and things like that but yeah anything yeah. that we bring in as donations goes right back out into the community did you mention the uh, white cane do you guys do the uh, white good. cane right? we have white cane in the spring yeah and coming up here uh, actually the day after Thanksgiving 
Friday and Saturday, and then the following Friday and Saturday, we will be on the streets with Goodfellow papers. There you go. Handing out, handing out the newspaper. All right. So yeah. looking for donations. So if you see the cones on the road, slow, slow down. down yeah. First of all, <laughs> slow down. That's why we have the cones. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we'll be in vests and look for us out there collecting donations for that. There you go. Hit That's the ATM, the... keep some cash on you. <laughs> yeah. And when you see these guys down the Day road, after you'll Christmas. have the, the money Black, in hand. Black Friday. Black Friday. Yeah. Don't there just bring you your credit yeah. card, bring your cash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. Roger, so. thanks for joining us, and, and thanks for all the good you, you and the Lions do in the community. Um, it's really great seeing you out and about. Well, thanks, Joe. Yeah. Tracy, yeah. thanks yes. for having us. Thank you, Roger. We all appreciate right. it. And we'll see you soon. Uh, a tradition that we had going here at Owen TV for a long time was uh, when Halloween would roll around, we would do karaoke, where our volunteers and producers would come in and, uh, and sing uh, karaoke songs live on the air. Uh, so we're going to do a little throwback to one of those uh, karaoke performances from the past. Enjoy. <laughs> New out moved in a haunted house. Still I made up my mind to stay. I was working in the lab late one night when my eyes beheld an eerie sight for a monster from its slab began to rise and suddenly to my surprise he did the mash he did the monster mash it was a graveyard smash it got on in a flash he did the monster mash in my laboratory in the castle east to the master bedroom where the vampires feast. All the ghouls came from their humble abodes to get a jolt from my electrodes. They did the mash. They did the monster mash. It was a graveyard smash. It got on in a flash. They did the monster mash. The zombies were having fun. The party had just begun. The guests included Wolfman Mac, Dracula, and his son. The scene was rocking, all but ticking the sounds. While Igor on the chains, backed by his baying hounds. The coffin bangers were about to arrive. And the vocal group. The Crypt Kicker 5, they did the mash. They played the monster mash. It was a graveyard smash. It caught on in a flash. They played the monster mash. Out from his coffin, Drax voice did ring. Seems he was troubled by just one thing. He opened the lid and he shook his fist and said, Whatever happened to my Transylvania twist? It's, it's now the, the mash. mash, it's now the monster mash, the monster mash. and it's caught on in a flash, it's now the mash. ooh, the monster mash, it's now the mash. yeah, the monster mash, oh, now everything is cool, Jack's a part of the band, and my monster mash, well it's the hit of the land, for you, the living, the mash was meant to, when you get to my door, you tell the booth man, and you can mash, and you can monster mash, monster mash And do my graveyard smash And you can mash You'll catch you on in a flash And you can mash And then you can monster mash Oh, mash good Easy, Igor, you're a petulous young boy Ow! So that, I didn't realize that was the clip that we picked. That, that is a friend of mine, uh, Matt Kelly, and he's kind of pseudo-famous. He For years, he played a character on local TV uh, called Wolfman Mac, oh. and he would host uh, horror movies and things like that and come on, you know, during commercial breaks or whatever and do little sketches, and he had a little sidekick called Bony Bob who was a puppet, 
and he had a huge following and he wow. would make uh, live appearances at Halloween events and stuff and we've even had him in the studio we did a episode of his show uh, here in the studio and we turned that into the ONTV Halloween Spooktacular where we had okay. some spooky sketches and skits and stuff like that it was a lot of fun that sounds like a, well that looked like a lot of fun I think <laughs> we should bring it back for next year so. <laughs> I would occasionally jump on stage yeah. I remember <laughs> one year singing uh, Ghost Riders in the Sky as Johnny Cash uh, that was a lot of fun. So, yeah, we may have to think about bringing that back. Yeah, that was, that so. was a blast, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, speaking of Wolfman Mac and, and uh, horror movie hosts, what are your memories as a young person growing up here in this, this area? Do you remember watching Sir Graves Ghastly or The Ghoul? Oh, I was not a scary movie person, <laughs> so no. I avoided any scare, anything scary. So oh, wow. I liked that it was fun to dress up and trick-or-treat and, you know, the happy side of Halloween, but yeah. but the, the scary side was not really uh, I, for me. Uh, Sir Graves Gasly, who I think his real name was uh, Lem Dawson, I think was his name, he, he used to commute from Cleveland here to Detroit, and he did his Sir Graves Gasly show on WJBK, I think it was, TV2. And I credit him with introducing me to all the classic universal horror monsters like Frankenstein and Dracula and the creature from the Black Lagoon. Okay. I do remember, though, when his open would start, my little sister would run out of the room <laughs> screaming. She sc he scared the heck out of yeah. her. Um, <laughs> but I always looked forward to that. That was always a lot of fun. And yeah. uh, I think it was like a Saturday afternoon or something is when he would come on and do his thing. And okay. uh, if it was a rainy, gray day, then I would be inside watching Sir Graves Gasly. And, and then in the evening, I think it was Saturday nights, we had the ghoul. And uh, I was pretty young when The Ghoul was on, so I, I didn't really get to stay up too late to watch The Ghoul, but uh, he was enormously popular. And then later on, we had Count Scary. Do you remember Count okay. Scary? And I, I remember the Adams Family. Okay. <laughs> I know it's not really Halloween, but it reminded me of Halloween. Yeah, and yeah. I enjoyed that. Well, I love <laughs> the Adams Family and the Munsters, yeah. but Tom Ryan, who for years was on WOMC, he created a character called uh, Count Scary. And what he used to do is he would show old B movies and talk through them. Like he, he'd act like he didn't realize his microphone was on. And so he would badmouth <laughs> the movie and the actors and it would air that way. And kind of a precursor to Mystery Science Theater 3000 where the guy and his two little robots would talk through the entire yeah, movie. Uh, but Count Scary, Tom Ryan used to do that. And that was, that was a blast. That yeah. was a lot of fun. <laughs> did you have any uh, family Halloween traditions that you did? Was, was, did you go to any of the haunted houses or anything like that? Again, I was not <laughs> scary. I, I know one time in elementary school, maybe middle school, my brother, my younger brother, was going with his friend and his friend's dad to a haunted house in Rochester, downtown Rochester in the park they used to put, you know, put this haunted house on. And I remember being so scared. <laughs> I sat in the corner. <laughs> I sat in the corner until they came and got me and led me out. <laughs> so when I say I'm not into scary, that's just not my... <laughs> well, uh, I haven't so, yeah. been to one in a while. I do remember Independence Township used to have a really cool sort of an outdoor Halloween attraction. And yeah. I, I remember like going through like a, a dark maze where you can hardly see anything. And I'm kind of feeling my way around. And then I put my hand out and it's on the chest of like one of their creatures. It's like, ah! Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, I did that. several years ago. I went, um, I think it was out to Blake's and you take this hayride and paintball, you know, and, oh, wow. you know, the, the ghosts and stuff that are out there. And that was, that was kind of fun. Yeah. So, um, not scary. Wow. I did get talked into going to the, into the haunted house. Again, I needed somebody <laughs> in the front of mine. I just kept my eyes closed and walked through. That's funny. <laughs> so. Out in uh, New Boston, uh, where my family lives out there, uh, uh, their fire department, uh, their, their whole town would really get into Halloween, and their fire department would open up at night, and they would check candy, you know, do the x-rays, have cider and donuts and popcorn and stuff like that. I don't know if the Orient Township Fire Department does that. It would be really cool if they did, especially yeah. in the village. <laughs> um, yeah. And then on Halloween morning, I, I might, I've never seen this in person yet, but I might sneak down there. Uh, Blanche Sims Elementary 
does the long time tradition where all the kids are encouraged to wear costumes and they leave the school and they walk through the village of Lake Orion in costumes and show off their, their Halloween costumes. So maybe I have I'll seen grab a camera before, and do that. And that is That's fun. really cool. Yeah. I remember doing that in elementary yeah. school. I grew up in Hamtramck and we would leave the school and walk around the block in our costumes and do a little parade. That was always yes. a blast. Well, yeah. they do it at some of the other elementary schools as well. My kids went to Stadium Drive and would do weather depend weather dependent it would be yeah. indoors or outdoors but it was always fun to see all the kids parade yeah. through so and trick-or-treating hours uh in the township in the village are 6 to 8 p.m mm -hmm. uh i can't imagine they enforce it too heavily but uh um, but when you're ready to go out trick-or-treating let's yeah. hope for good weather and yes, uh you got nice. six to eight to go out there and do your trick-or-treating it would be so. nice i really do like how it's later the first yeah. hour now so now you can actually see the trick-or-treaters yeah. the first hour and then it gets now is daylight well. savings time done do we are we not doing daylight savings or is there one more all right, so I think there's one more clock shift this fall, and then I think we're done. Yes. And I'm glad. I yeah. hated daylight savings time. I didn't like that. <laughs> so I hated when it got too dark too early. But Yeah, well, so it is official? Because I had heard that it wasn't official that that was I don't know. Last I heard, through, I think this is going to be the last shift, and then we're done with it. Okay, so well. The, right. the public has spoken. So. <laughs> yeah, the fall back I always like. The spring ahead, you know, <laughs> not my favorite. That's so. right, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the uh, Lake Orion Dragons football season um, isn't quite over. The regular season mm -hmm. has come to an end. Uh, they closed out their season uh, hosting the Celine Hornets on Friday. Uh, due to some uh, math and uh, some trickeration, uh, Lake Orion did reach the playoffs. Uh, they're going to be traveling to Rochester Adams, uh, who are eight and one. Lake Orion finished uh, four and five, I believe. Okay. So we're going to wish them luck. But uh, my coworker Joey Tysak has put together this sports package to kind of recap what's been happening in sports over the past week or so. Take it away, Joey. <laughs> Orion Sports Update. I'm your host Joey Tysick and the fall sports season is winding down as teams are looking towards their final game or the playoffs. Today we'll give some updates on varsity football, volleyball, and boys soccer. The Lake Orion boys soccer team has had a very up and down season but they have kept a lot of games close to give themselves a chance in almost every contest. To wrap up their regular season they beat Utica 1-0 on the road and then dropped their next road game to Birmingham Seahome 1-3. For their final game of the season, they played Notre Dame Prep at home and unfortunately lost 0-3. As they moved on to districts, they faced off against Utica once again for the first round and were able to beat them at home for the 2-1 win that ended on a thrilling shootout. In the second round of the district playoffs, Lake Orion faced off against Rochester Adams on the road. However, they were unable to get the offense going and lost 1-3. Lake Orion finished the season with a 9 11 and 4 record while having a 3 1 and 2 record in the OAA White play. The Dragons had a decent season in the White and were able to get a win in the playoffs, so they can't hang their heads, and next year will be a lot of new faces as this team graduates a lot of seniors. The Dragons volleyball team is also winding down their season as they are quickly approaching district playoffs. To get ready for the playoffs, the Dragons packed their October schedule with two tournaments and a few final league matchups. And what in October it has been! In their first tournament on October 1st, they won the entire thing beating Dryden, Saginaw, Laker, Chandler Park Academy, and South Lyon without dropping a single set. Then in their final four league games, they would only drop one set to Troy while going on to beat Troy, Seaholm, Oxford, and Stony Creek. All solid teams, but Lake Orion has found their groove. In the second tournament just the past weekend on October 22nd, the Dragons played some tough competition as they tied with Forest Hills Central beat Traverse City West in Coopersville, and then dropped games to Dakota and their third-place match against Forest Hills Central. The Dragons will end the regular season on Thursday against Novi and then prepare for the first round of districts where they will play Pontiac early next week. We will update you on their district game on the next episode. Good luck, Dragons. And finally, the football team looked to make a run for the playoffs, but some of the top teams in the OAA Red were in Lake Orient's path to get there. It started on September 30th as the Dragons would travel to West Bloomfield to take on the Lakers, who are one of the top teams in the state right now. Lake Orion knew it would be a tough fight and it turned out to be just that. West Bloomfield's defense stymied the Dragons and they just could never get into a rhythm. West Bloomfield would take the game fairly easily 41-14. to 
Then, on October 7th, the Dragons welcomed in rival Clarkston into Dragon Stadium for their homecoming event. This would turn into one of the craziest games of the season, and right away we knew how tough Clarkson would be as on Clarkson's second play of the game was an Ethan Clark touchdown for 80 yards. Lake Orion was able to answer in the middle of the first as T.R. Hill took a quarterback draw to the end zone from 20 yards out to tie the game at 7. On Clarkson's next possession, they fumbled the ball from the 15, and then Lake Orion's Pat Rowland would scoop up the ball and run into the end zone for the touchdown, giving them the lead 14 to 7. Clarkson then responded themselves as they marched down the field methodically, ending in another Clark touchdown to tie up the game again. Early on in the second quarter, the Wolves would get the ball back, and on a quarterback bootleg, Clarkson would take the lead again 21 to 14 over the Dragons. Clarkson's defense got another stop and gave their offense another chance before the end of the half. Off a Wildcat play-action pass, the Wolves were able to get all the way down to the 10-yard line and set them up for another score, this time from Desmond Stevens off a jet sweep. But yet again, the Dragons kept fighting as on their next drive, they got an 85-yard touchdown from quarterback T.R. Hill to bring them within one score of the Wolves. The half didn't end there. With three minutes to go, the Dragons would get a pick six from Caden DeFraffenry to tie the game at 28. I told you it would be wild. And with under two minutes left, Clark would find his third touchdown of the half, giving Clarkston the lead once again, 35-28. The second half would slow down just a little as both teams knew this was an important game. Lake Orion had a chance to score early on, but Clarkston was able to cause a fumble and take the possession away from the Dragons. Clarkson then marched down the field, but Lake Orion made a huge stop as Clarkson went for a fourth down to try and put the game away. This would lead us to the fourth quarter where the game felt like it just started. Lake Orion stopped Clarkson and forced them to punt, but the Wolves pinned Lake Orion on the one yard line and were able to break the Dragons offensive line and tackle them in the end zone for the safety, giving them two points and the ball. And Clarkson didn't waste that extra possession as Ethan Clark got another touchdown for his fourth of the game and that drive put him over the 400 yard mark on the ground. After going for the two point conversion, the Wolves took the 45 to 28 lead with six minutes to go. The Dragons had a great drive that ended with a TR Hill pass to his brother Dorian for the touchdown with four minutes left in the game, bringing Lake Orion within 10 points of Clarkson. Then on the ensuing kickoff, the Dragons went for an onside and they got it to get the ball right back. Clarkson's defense responded, but Lake Orion was able to get a 39-yard field goal attempt to bring the Dragons within seven. However, the kick came up just short with three minutes left in the game. Using their timeouts, Lake Orion was able to force the Wolves to a three and out, allowing the Dragons to get another chance with two minutes left to go. And then with one minute left, Billy Roberson ran into the end zone for the touchdown, bringing the Dragons within four, as Lake Orion would miss the extra point. They would have to go for another onside kick and hope for the miracle. And Lake Orion did it again, getting the perfect bounce and catching the onside. Unfortunately, on the third play of the drive, there was a high snap that made it tough for TR to grab and he fumbled, which was recovered by Clarkson, ending the game 45 to 41. Although the Dragons lost it, it was an instant classic for these two teams. The following week, the Dragons traveled to North Farmington and Lake Orion needed to win to keep their playoff hopes alive. And Lake Orion got it done as Lake Orion defeated North Farmington 42-7. For the final game of the season, the Dragons would be at home against a tough Celine team who has quarterback CJ Carr, a five-star recruit that is already committed to Notre Dame. Celine had lost two in a row entering the game, but Celine looked like they were not happy with those losses as their offense was clicking from the jump. Lake Orion fought hard, but Carr was on point with his passing as he accounted for four passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns in the game, leading Celine to the 49-21 victory over the Dragons, which would lead Lake Orion on the bubble of making the playoffs and having to wait for Selection Sunday to find out if they had made the cut. Thankfully for Dragons fans, Lake Orion will get another chance as they got a playoff bid this week against Rochester Adams, a team that Lake Orion is familiar with and I'm sure would love another chance at. Good luck, Lake Orion. On the next episode, we will update you on the volleyball and football team's playoff games as they look to keep moving on into the postseason. For even more Lake Orion sports, check out our YouTube channel for our full game coverage. Visit youtube.com and search for Orion Neighborhood Television. Also, make sure to catch all of our replays Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m., along with Saturdays at 1 p.m. We'll see you next time.
So yeah, I was out on the sidelines on uh, Friday night uh, during that Celine game, and yeah. uh, you know, every, every year I'm like, man, this might be my last season running up and down those sidelines. <laughs> I might have to get a younger person to do it, but I really enjoyed a lot, and I was yeah. kind of sad, like at the end of the game going, wow, this is the last uh, regular season game of the season. And I had so much fun. And I traveled out to Oxford when, uh, like, Orion traveled to Oxford. And I'm there on the sidelines for all the home games. And I, I really do enjoy being it's in a, the action. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, one of my daughters was on fall break, and we went to the homecoming game. Yeah. And, I mean, it's just such great energy, great community feel. Um, yeah, it is. Love to see our dragons. I love, in fact, I was having this conversation with family, um, how in Lake Orion, we are all dragons. You know, sure. every elementary school, middle school, and through the high school. Yeah. And, you know, they were saying, I really like that. Yeah. Because most districts, you have a different, you know, mascot, different mascot for, yeah, for yeah. each school. So it's just, I, I love is. how we're always all brought together. We're all dragons, yeah. Yep. Now, uh, sadly, the Halloween events are sort of winding down here in the community. I don't think there's too much more uh, left other than, like I said, the, some of the Halloween parades at the elementary schools. Mm -hmm. We're going to be shifting gears now into the, the holiday events are going to be starting up in November with lots coming up. Uh, so here is uh, this week's quick hits to give you an idea of what you can expect over the next few weeks. On Thursday, the Orion Township's Rec Department is hosting a Halloween dance for individuals with special needs and disabilities who are 13 years and older. The dance will take place at the Orient Center from 6 to 8 p.m. Stop by for an evening of music, dancing, and light refreshments. Walk-ins are welcome for pre-registration is preferred at orientparks.com. Trick or Treat at the Oakland County Farmers Market this Saturday at Trick or Treat at the Market. Come by the market anytime between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. for an afternoon of fun. Costumes are encouraged. For details, call 248-858-5495. The Orient Library will be hosting a glow-in-the-dark dance party on Saturday at 11 a.m. Dress in your Halloween best and join the library for a dance party in the dark. Lots of glow sticks will be provided. For more information, visit orientlibrary.org. Have you ever wondered about the mythical creatures that lurk in Michigan's forest? On Saturday, the Wind Nature Center will be hosting a cryptid hike from 5 to 6 p.m. Join a naturalist on a hike to learn about Michigan's myths and folklore. Pre-registration is required by calling 248-858-0916. On Monday, the Orion Library will be hosting a Halloween story time from 10 to 11 a.m. Join your favorite librarians as they lead you in a Halloween-themed story time with music, dancing, stories, and fun. A costume parade through the library follows this fun-filled event. For more information, visit orionlibrary.org. Now let's take a look at this week's weather. Wednesday's forecast is calling for rain with a high 58 and low 35. Partly cloudy on Thursday with high 54 and low 37. Partly cloudy again on Friday with high 56 and low 35. Mostly sunny on Saturday with high 60 and low 41. And partly cloudy on Sunday with high 59 and low 45. Well, that's it for this week's Owen TV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. So there you go. Mark your calendar. A uh, few more Halloween-related events coming yes. up over the next week in the Lake Orion area. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know about you, but I like driving around and seeing all the uh, Halloween decorations that people have up. Some people go all out. Um, some of the scariest decorations I've seen are the election signs that have popped up everywhere. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, they're everywhere. The election signs are everywhere. Um, of course, we're two weeks away yep. uh, from today, today two weeks yeah. away uh, to the uh, midterm elections. Yes. So we want to encourage you to get out and vote. Um, it's, this is a big one. It it's is. A big one. Yeah, there's there's a lot on the ballot this year. So yeah. if you uh, if you haven't been getting your information, um, there's websites I know at the township offices. They have a great newspaper put on by the the League of Women Voters. Voters yeah, yeah. Um, has information on everything Oakland County. Every that's going to be on every ballot and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. you can tune into Tea with Tracy. You can get, there some, you get go. some information You've been as well. Some people. Penny was on yes, your show but, recently, yep, right? I've had Penny, Aaron Watley, yeah. um, Heather Sin Sanawi. Sanawi, yes, yeah, I yeah. know. I was like, yep, Sanawi. Um, yeah, I, and uh, Donnie Steele, and then I'll have Chris Barnett on next week. So okay. just talking about um, what these different positions do, what the millages are about. 
um, just straight fact information so right. that you can make informed decisions on November 8th. Yeah, and so. not just you know national elections, but local stuff. We have school board, we have the yes. village, yes. Uh, the township. Is, is there some township positions that are up for grabs? I'm trying to read. Not township positions. Uh, no. No. Uh, no. Donnie uh, was on to talk about state representative. Yeah, so what she's running for what Michigan House, I think it is. The state, yeah, Michigan so. state representative. She's, yeah, yeah. Yep, she's running for, and she's for our area. Yep. So. And uh, the the millet. Uh, the Parks and Rec has a millage on the ballot uh, on uh, uh, November 8th, so mm -hmm. uh, look for that when you vote. Um, look at both sides of your ballot. Usually it's on both sides. Yep. Um, yes. My daughter just uh, just did her ballot because, again, she's going to be away at school, so she did her absentee ballot, and it's it's a full two sides, yeah. so make sure you're... Yeah. You, you flip it over. So we have a little segment for you to kind of get you up to speed uh, for Election Day coming up on November 8th. Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, I'm Penny Schultz, your Orion Township Clerk. Tuesday, November 8, 2022, is the general election for the purpose of electing federal, state, and local representatives and for voting on state and local proposals. Due to the number of candidates and proposals, a two-sided ballot is necessary. Please remember to vote both sides of your ballot to ensure your voice is heard on all levels. Polls will open at 7 o'clock a.m. and remain open until 8 o'clock p.m. and all voters will vote at their regular polling location. Please review your voter ID card to confirm your polling location as all voting precincts were moved out of the Lake Orion Community School Districts starting in 2022. You may also visit www.411votes or scan this QR code to find your new permanent polling location. Additional voting information is also available by visiting the Secretary of State's website at michigan.gov backslash vote for precinct information, sample ballots, and proposal language or candidate information. Please note that Thursday, October 24th is the last day to register to vote or change your address for the November 8, 2022 general election. All Orion Township precincts are handicap accessible in compliance with the voting accessibility requirements of the Help America Vote Act. Voting instructions in an audio or braille format are available to voters prior to the election or at the polls on election day. Please feel free to contact me anytime if additional information is needed at 248-391-0304 or P-S-H-U-L-T-S at OrionTownship.org. Trained election inspectors will answer questions about the voting process at your precinct on election day, or you may wish to contact the clerk's office in advance of the election at 248-391-0304 with questions or concerns. It's my goal to equip every voter with the information to assist them in the voting process. Absent voter ballots for the November 8, 2022 general election are available at the Orion Township Clerk's Office. To obtain an application for absent voter ballots, please call 248-391-0304 or come to the Clerk's Office which is located at 2323 Joslin Road between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 4 o'clock p.m. Monday through Friday. The last day absent voter ballots can be mailed to you is Friday, November 4th. The clerk's office will be open from 7 o'clock a.m. until 3 o'clock p.m. on Saturday, November 5th for absent voter balloting only. For further information, please contact the clerk's office at 248-391-0304 or elections at oriontownship.org. I'm Penny Schultz, and I'm looking forward to another outstanding election in Orion Township. We're looking forward to seeing you at the polls on election day. Thank you.
Thanks, Penny. That's great information and uh, time to wind down, Orient, today. Yes. We'd like to thank the Balanikis for this beautiful set and yeah. Tracy um, for giving us this Halloween uh, themed set today. It looks awesome. And uh, thank you for watching. And Tracy, thanks for joining me. Thanks uh, for having me. We will not be live in two weeks uh, on Election Day, but we'll be back soon after that. And make sure you get out there to vote on November 8th. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Thanks All for right. watching. Thanks. Bye bye.